Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Mood616 and welcome to another Top 10 Tuesday video. This is episode 35 and yes, it is the Top 10 Trauma Flicks. Um, and with that said, of course, this is not going to be my bonafide Top 10 Trauma releases um, or else it's just going to be that same generic list that, you know, probably everyone... Uh, that you've seen over and over again, I should say. Um, so this is going to consist consist of, you know, to no Toxic Avenger films, uh, Class of Nukem Highs, and, you know, stuff like that. Like Mother's Day and Father's Day and The Taint, Cannibal the Musical, I don't know, Troma's War. You know, you guys get the picture. All the really classic ones. Terror Firmer, which is another one that's really well known. Um, but yeah, you guys get the picture. Uh, I'm basically just going to, you know break down 10 uh, other trauma flicks I, I think that people need to check out because they're actually really good. I know trauma gets a really bad rap, you know, for having such bad films and stuff, but I tend to find the people that say that haven't seen a lot of trauma films. So maybe these films, you know, might be not, they might not be their actual thing or whatever, but who knows? Give them a shot anyways. First up is a film called Evil Clutch. Uh, this one right here, I actually did review on my 88 series. It's, you know, obviously a demon type film, kind of like a, in a way, like a Evil Dead type ripoff thing. Uh, this is actually from one of the uh, the tin sets. Um, I think this is from the, the Red Cross, the Blood Bank one. Um, but really fun though, really fun. Obviously the super low budget, but it's, it's just so 80s. And I, I believe this film is Italian. But yeah, it's a totally Italian film, uh, and it has that feel to it, man. It's really low budget Italian feeling, but super fun, man. If you like demon flicks, you know, give this one a shot. Evil Clutch. Uh, you guys can always search out my review if you want to know more about it. Uh, next up here is Where Evil Lives. Um, yeah, this one right here, Claude Atkins. I believe this was Claude Atkins' last appearance in a film before he passed away. Uh, this is pretty fun, man. I gotta say, um, really good stuff. It's like an anthology flick. Uh, I think he plays like a gardener or something. At the beginning of the film, he starts telling these stories of like, you know, different type of um, uh, what does it say here? Uh, unfolds, yeah, you know, murder and revenge, and yeah, it's got like basically all the stories are you know kind of different subgenres. Uh, pretty cool though, man. I like this anthology flick. It's just one I don't really hear a lot of people talk about, which is kind of uh, interesting. But yeah, where evil lives, cool stuff. And number nine, number eight is gonna be Blades. Blades is absolutely ridiculous fun. Uh, it's basically about a killer giant lawnmower. Um, and it takes place on a golf course, so I mean, you pretty know, you pretty much know what to expect with that. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous, but so much fun. I, I remember hearing the premise of this film, and it took me so many years to finally get around to seeing it because I couldn't find this for a good price. Um, and uh, yeah, if, you know, I finally got my hands on it, and it's just so much fun, so much fun. The other flicks on here, Blood Hook's actually really fun. You know, it's about a killer fish hook. Um, and uh, Zombie Island Massacre is really, really bad, but kind of fun. Uh, but Blades, though, is the one that you need to check out. You know, ridiculous, but super fun. At times, it almost reminds me of, like, a trauma version of Caddyshack at times. It's really ridiculous. Um, and at number seven is a more a well-known film uh, by a director that I absolutely love and Don Doler. Uh, this one right here might be such a super fun kind of sci-fi monster flick. Um, obviously horror elements, um, just a fucking blast. I, I'm just, I love, um, Don Doler's, you know, ambition in his films, you know, he, he made some really low budget type films and, you know, he, uh, you know, obviously has passed on now, but, uh, but yeah, you know, he just, you gotta like his, you know, his ambition and what he did with these type of films, but if you've never seen Night Beast, give it a shot. It's really low budget. I believe it's from 1980. Uh, but Fun as hell. It's fun as hell. Night Beast. Really cool flick right there. And that was number seven. Number six right here is a film called Screenplay. Um, this one I never hear anyone talk about. Uh, it's unfortunate too because it's a really interesting flick. It's shot in black and white. It kind of has that old 50s feel. It even has like these crazy 50s sets. Um, they did a really good job with kind of, you know, making it feel like an actual 50s film. And, and it's pretty much what you expect it to be about. It's, you know, somebody that's writing a script and, 
you know, it starts coming to reality. You know, writing a killer script can be grisly murder. So it's got that type of idea to it, but it's really well done. It's, you know, it's one of those flicks that you just kind of have to check out, but it's a, it's a big surprise. Like, I had this one on the shelf for a long time before I ever checked it out and gave it a spin one day, and I was like, damn, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, screenplay, definitely give it a shot. Pretty interesting flick. And that's number five, or number six. Number five is uh, Doomsday County. This is a flick I believe I reviewed on body bags um, I want to say it was body bags uh, really really fun flick man this one's got it all you know vampires zombies aliens no problem exactly uh, so you pretty much know what you're gonna get with it again you know trauma low budget but it's really fun all good practical effects in this and just batshit kind of crazy at times too it's just it was a big surprise for me when I first watched it I was like just wasn't expecting a whole lot you know you kind of get that with a lot of trauma flicks sometimes but this one exceeded my expectations and gave me a lot more and actually had it has a lot of replay value it's really fun to throw on late night having some beers and it's just ridiculous fun but Doomsday County give it a shot and yeah that was number Five number four is a uh, Stuart Simpson film called The Demons Among Us. Uh, this is another one I never hear anybody talk about. As you know, pretty much with his other films, he he did another film called El Monstro, and his latest one was called Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla. Uh, he's an Australian director. Uh, really doesn't get a lot of uh, notoriety around here. Uh, maybe because this was released on Troma. Uh, El Monstro is a really interesting flick. Obviously, this is a demon flick. El Monstro is like a monster flick. And Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla is like a drama horror film. All his films are so, so different. Um, really cool stuff. Uh, he's got... Uh, there's a short in here called Sicky. Um, which... I, someone asked me the other day if I'd seen this. And I replied no, and then I popped it in, and I was like, I've watched that before. Jesus, I just didn't remember watching it. But yeah, that's a really cool uh, short flick, um, short film that Stuart Simpson did. But Demons Among Us, obviously, this is kind of like a really crazy, off-the-wall, kind of sometimes almost incoherent narrative to it. But it's it does have a structured storyline, and it's really kind of one that you need to pay attention to. It's really interesting. Um, so it's got replay value to it, too. Uh, but definitely check it out. Demons Among Us. Very cool flu film. And at number three is another one that I never expected to be, you know, any good really. And that's Luth the Geek. Uh, this was one that I just, I don't know, man. Judging by the cover, I thought it was going to be super kind of goofy and stupid and, you know, trauma, trauma-esque basically. Uh, but this one's actually kind of played straightforward. It really surprised the shit out of me. This one's kind of brutal um, and it's nasty and it just it just was not what I was expecting. I loved it. Um, this is one grim, unsettling, tensely made flick. It really is, though. It's actually, you know, the, the cover is just so misleading to this, in my opinion. It just seems like it's going to be kind of like a, you know, like a, a stupid clown type horror. Not clown clown, but just goofy. But yeah, Luther the Geek, interesting flick. Got to check it out. In at number three. Number two uh, is film called There's Nothing Out There. Really, really fun creature feature. I believe this one came out in 1990. I think it broke into the 90s or 91. I can't remember. I think it's something like that. Um, yeah, this is 1990 on here. This is fun as hell. All practical effects. This really goofy, you know, low budget. A bunch of get peep friends go out to a house and, you know, creatures start attacking. Um, you know, just fun as shit, man. You gotta check it out. There's nothing out there. Uh, this is one I actually haven't watched in a while, but I just remember absolutely loving this. I've seen it a couple times, but yeah. Give this one a shot. There's nothing out there. Fumbling around here. And number one is Astron 6. Uh, this is basically a uh, compilation of all their shorts that they've done. You know, I mean, probably not all of them, but this is like five hours long of just random shorts covering all types of genres and subgenres and and things like that. These guys are really innovative and funny and clever and just very promising filmmakers. Of course, they, you know, did Father's Day. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really, really looking forward to the editor. Manborg was a fucking blast, too. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to the editor. I hear it's just kind of like a Neo Giallo type deal. But, but this right here kind of gives you a little bit of everything. It's got some gore. It's got some comedy. It's got some serious laughs. And it's really, really fucking fun to watch because you never know what you're going to get next. It's just such a blast. Um, but yeah, the reason why I had this at number one is because I had 
had shown this a while back and someone even said to me, they're like, I had no idea that it even existed. And I was like, damn, you're missing out. This is a really fun compilation. It's definitely worth your money. I mean, you know, you could probably get this thing for 10 bucks, but it's five hours of, you know, goodness. So can't go wrong with that. So, but yeah, anyways, that's going to do it for the top 10. Of course, again, number 10, Evil Clutch, Where Evil Lives, Blades, Night Beast. And then we got Screenplay, Doomsday County, The Demons Among Us, Luther the Geek, There's Nothing Out There, and Astron 6. So yeah, oh, and I do want to give one honorable mention here because I started watching this again. And it's the Chainsaw, Sha Chainsaw Sha Sally Show. Oh my God, I cannot talk right now. I'm just so fucking tired. It's been 13, 14 hour day. The Chainsaw Sally Show, season one. Um, this is like... It's basically, it was like webisodes or something. Um, but man, so much fucking fun. I think this is so much more fun than the movie. The TV show is just an absolute blast. And if anybody is out there still watching this video and let me know whatever happened to season two. Because I remember there was a website and I think there was pre-orders for it. And I don't think it ever came out because I've never seen anyone show it off. And I've tried to order it and I can't order it. So I always wondered what happened to season two. Because apparently it got done, but... I don't know if it ever got released or what the hell is going on, but I don't know. I love this chick, man. April Monique Burrell, however you say her name, but she's fucking awesome. But this is just some batshit crazy ridiculousness. Um, but yeah, I've been watching this recently again, and it's just so much fucking fun to throw on. But yeah, Chainsaw Sally, season one. Let me know if, if you guys have any info on season two, because I would really like to know. I just can't seem to find anything. So, but yeah, Chainsaw Sally. Yeah, and that's going to do it for, you know, 10 little less known trauma flicks. Give them a shot. I know trauma flicks aren't for everybody, but these ones, you might find some pleasure in them. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for episode 35. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll check you later. Peace.